Uh, the idea is just to give you a quick information about CloudStack for those who are new to CloudStack. Uh, and obviously, uh, Philip has already shared uh, a couple of things, and there's obviously a reason why this whole project within uh, Limit uh, is taking place. So uh, just a few words about me. Uh, they made me smile on this picture. I look, look less ridiculous in person than on the picture, but yeah, just aside. Um, I'm working with the cloud architecture at Blue uh, for the last six, almost seven years. And uh, I've been involved with CloudStack from version 4.0, which is basically 12 years now. Uh, also, I'm the project uh, committer and PMC member and here two daughters if anyone's interested. Now, uh, moving to actually uh, the, the real stuff, uh, just a couple of words about CloudStack. Um, we basically, I don't like to read the slides, uh, but we literally, that's basically how we market it uh, or, or simply speak about it. It's a really scalable uh, multi-tenant uh, cloud orchestration platform. And it supports uh, tons of different options. It, it supports uh, quite a few hypervisors. And we're talking about production level support and what customers are actually, users actually, sorry, are actually running and also our customers, like Shebu customers as well. Uh, it scales to literally thousands and tens of thousands of hosts. Uh, the largest known production installation uh, a couple of years ago was uh, over 35 physical sorry, 35,000 physical nodes. And now for, we are actually doing a bit of optimization for one of our customers that really matter uh, to be able to scale over 50,000 nodes and I think over one or two million VMs, don't quote me. So it's, it's we're talking really serious numbers. Uh, it provides sky availability, uh, different choices of networking, uh, different isolation methods, uh, different SDN solutions, depending on the uh, high price of choice you make. And obviously, beside the UI, uh, which you partially already have seen, uh, in the background, there is actually an API and the uh, UI, which you can argue it's a UI-based client towards the API. We have uh, command line uh, clients, Cloud Monkey being, let's say, the, 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 the famous one, so to say. And at the end of the day, you're talking to the API, so you can build whatever, uh, uh, let's say, uh, you want uh, by that one. Now, why Apache Cloud Stack? Um, I actually today had a pre-sales meeting where one of the guys uh, from um, a big company said uh, we heard it was like a niche product. And then we actually had to mention a couple of uh, names. <laughs> so actually they got to the understanding that uh, it's anything but the niche product. And uh, uh, it's fully integrated or uh, turnkey, as we like to say. You don't have many different components to build together like maybe some other cloud solutions. Now, uh, it's uh, assuming you have all the hardware in place, all the networking in place, it actually takes literally a week or two, assuming your hardware is ready to configure everything and start from scratch. We're talking about more serious uh, distributed cloud deployment, not, not a PLC, which obviously takes uh, even less time. Um, it's fully open source, so the license uh, cost is zero. If you like a vendor support, there is a company you can talk to, obviously. And actually, if you look at your slide, you will see just some of the uh, names uh, who are actually uh, CloudStack users. Uh, some of them are not here, but they are publicly they are publicly, um, let's say, um, uh, declared as CloudStack user, which is actually Apple. Just to give you an idea, uh, so all these companies they don't work, they don't use CloudStack just because they have nothing else to use, but because it actually works for them. So that's just a brief why. Architecture-wise, as I already mentioned, it's kind of a turnkey solution. That's how we like to uh, explain. There is no building blocks of separate kind of networking and storage and this and that, and then you combine everything together with a lot of programming skills. So the whole engine uh, is the API, and then on top of API, uh, we have an uh, UI, the cluster, the, the sorry, the command line uh, client, if you like. Um, and uh, on top of that, you can actually use whatever kind of other automation products you want, like Terraform, for example, or uh, Ansible against CloudStack and CloudStack API to automate provisioning workloads, if you like. 
and Apache Cloud stack in the background will be actually orchestrating and managing uh, provisioning, you know, and, and controlling life cycles of the VMs or instances or hypervisors, whatever you might be using. And also at the same time, um, provisioning uh, volumes and simply orchestrating uh, storage uh, to some degree, depending on what kind of storage uh, you want. Uh, just a couple of, uh, let's say a couple of last, um, uh, sorry, not last, a couple of uh, quick um, uh, news or, or new features in the last release. Uh, interestingly, for some of the people, we have introduced ARM64 support uh, with a multi architecture zones. So you basically, uh, when you create a zone, you can you can choose whether it's it will be ARM64 or the standard is 8664, uh, let's say architecture. Uh, we've introduced something called shared file systems uh, for the customer workloads for tenants where we actually export uh, we provide the effective and NFS appliance. Now, uh, also, we do, uh, we have introduced VMware NS64 support. You might ask why now during, considering the whole Broadcom situation, there are some customers who uh, actually don't have issues with that. Those are huge, huge, huge users of cloud stack in terms of footprint. So they simply uh, had a need for that and, and NS6 uh, was brought uh, because of the demand by, by this user. Now we have all, uh, certain other things like usage management. Uh, uh, when, when I say usage, we, we are talking about the cloud stack usage uh, data, uh, which we, which will be, which can be now managed in the UI, um, and uh, really, really a couple of other ra ra other interesting things, um, including dynamic and static routing, uh, also supporting Ceph as the object storage in in cloud stack and so on and so forth so a lot of improvements um, and of course a lot of bug fixes like with every software so in short uh, i think that's it uh, from my side uh, if you guys have any questions i'm more than happy to answer um, and i'm going to uh, hand over back to michael <clears throat> Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Andrea, for that. And we did have a, a couple more questions that came in. Um, and maybe this uh, question would be best suited for you, Andrea, um, okay. if I can uh, understand it correctly. Does CloudStack offer a marketplace for operating system images? Uh, we don't, uh, let's say, implement the marketplace as such, even though there were some ideas, uh, but we definitely have, uh, let's say, as expected, a list of template, uh, templates that you will be using with uh, uh, cloud set to deploy VMs from, or ISOs actually, depending on what you need. So it's not a market per se, but yes, definitely there is a list of templates uh, where you can offer different operating systems, for example, for the, your customers or for the VMs to be deployed from. Uh, thank you for that. Um, we had another question that came in, um, maybe specific to the uh, Limbit Cloud Stack HCI appliance. But uh, before I read that question, I'll just uh, make a pitch for you, Andrea, that we have your uh, years of expertise here with us. So uh, really, if anybody out there has uh, questions in the moment specific to CloudStack, this would be a great opportunity to ask those. Uh, the question that came in related to the um, CloudStack HCI appliance, um, during the HCI appliance installation, will the network card be set up for bonding? And a second, maybe related a question or unrelated, perhaps. Uh, can we configure multiple networks, such as management network, storage network, virtual machine network, during the installation? So uh, this I can um, confirm. Or uh, for the first question, um, it will not be automatically set up for bonding, but you can set it up in the installer. Um, con collect all your um, interfaces you want to bond, and uh, yeah, basically you can do this manually. We don't uh, have an automation for that. Uh, for the second thing, yes, you can also configure different networks. Um, so having a one network interface for storage and uh, one for the management network, one for the virtual machines. 
Uh, thank you, Moritz. Um, it, I did see another question that came in, uh, maybe related to um, previous questions about the um, uh, DHCP um, issue that was mentioned. Um, it looked like uh, maybe the question is more involved than we might have time to get to um, at the close of the meeting now, but uh, we, we, we will take a look at that in the um, video comments section and respond there. Or um, another um, pitch for um, Limbit Space is the Limbit Forum. Uh, this is forums.limbit.com where you can ask questions and relate stories uh, to the uh, wider Limbit software community of users. And uh, thank you, Kayla, for dropping the link there in the chat. It's uh, forums.limbit.com. So if we didn't get to your questions today during this meeting, um, please uh, feel free to drop them into the video comments um, or um, ask them at forums.limbit.com. And uh, again, uh, thank you all for your time. Um, really great meeting and uh, enjoyed being with you all. And thanks for everybody participating from the community, uh, for our customers, and thanks for the great questions that came in. And uh, special thanks uh, again, Andrea, to you uh, for sh giving us your time from Shape Blue. Appreciate it. My and uh, thank you, everybody. Till the next uh, community meeting in 2025.